In the study of psychology, we have a method of data collection called experiments. In that, there is a subtopic called field experiments. You may be thinking, what is a field experiment? What's so good about it? What's not so good about it? And most importantly, what examples do we have? Before we begin, we felt like it would be better visualized through the use of... Experimentation goes back a long, long way. The earliest form of field experiments it, began in the time of... Avit... Never mind, just over a thousand years ago. They mainly featured in geology, anthropology, and social psychology. Carrying out experiments out of the lab, free from scientist intervention. Now that's a field experiment. This way the participants and or the subjects get to be free and behave like their true selves, unaware that they're in an experiment. This may seem great to acquire accurate results, but everything has a price. And the price for these more realistic results are imperfect specimen, messy extraneous variables, and many more. So you know that experiments exist. Another method of data collection is studies that involve observation. Psychological studies are scientific studies observing the behaviors and mental process of a person or a group of people. Field experiments and lab experiments. The main difference is that field experiments don't have a controlled environment. So, what's so great about field experiments? First of all, high ecological validity can be obtained. The results of the field experiment can be directly linked to the real world, whilst lab experiments can't always do that. Don't you just hate it when your participants that humbly volunteered don't fit your description? Then fear not as field experiments are on the way. Field experiments don't have sampling bias problems as all results help the final conclusion and thus establishes a larger set of conclusions. Now, you may be thinking, wow, so many strengths! There must be some sort of weakness for field experiments, right? For starters, the control over extraneous variables is close to zero. Also, doing a follow-up research on the study is near impossible. It is a bit unethical, but everything comes with a sacrifice. Now you may say, what I'm saying is very vague, and you need concrete evidence and examples to understand properly. Luckily, we're not Trump, so we came prepared. The first example we'll be looking at is a study done by Jacobin van Appeldorn and Arthur Schramm. Their study's hypothesis was that a service request sent from a serving profile has a higher probability of being rewarded than a service request sent from a neutral profile. The problem was that many ethical guidelines were not followed. There was no right for the participants to withdraw, and there was the use of deception, meaning they were not told exactly what was going on. This is unavoidable in field experiments because researchers need the ecological validity and cannot tell their participants what they are doing, or else it ruins their genuine response and everyday life. This is the dilemma of a field experiment. To get the real results, the participants don't get to know the full picture. The results of the experiment can be used immediately. It doesn't have to be generalized like other lab experiment results. Also, the behavior of the participants were more genuine because they simply treated it as daily life. Thus, the researchers are not giving them the option to pretend. So let's go back and take a look at the study. In order to test our hypothesis, they created four cells, a mix between gender and nationality. The four cells are then applied for each of the serving and neutral profiles. In each profile, Self-reported experience and a set of 10 references from fake users are added. After conducting the experiment, Appledorm and Shran tabulated the results and found that the total response rate across all requests is 47% and above, for requests sent from serving profiles than from neutral profiles. Moreover, Israeli profiles are responded to more often than Dutch profiles, while differences between male and female are very small. The results provide strong support for the observation that a request sent from a member who has previously provided any service is more likely to receive a response than an otherwise identical member without any previous experience. Hence an indication of indirect reciprocity is observed. People are more likely to receive a response if they have helped any third parties in the past. Through Appledorn's study, we can see exactly how field experiments fit the magic guideline of psychological studies methodology, alternative explanations, gender, ethical and cultural concerns, as well as being as accurate as they could to form something closer to real-world results. The researchers kept in mind the guidelines of psychological studies by telling their participants that they're part of an experiment, even though they didn't directly tell them what the study was truly about. 
On top of that, they also remember to involve both males and females as to ensure fairness in their results. They even compared between two cultures. So one example is not enough, eh? Don't worry, I've got another one. This one's a bit easier to understand. The Hoffling Hospital Experiment We have a hospital. In this hospital are 22 nurses, all of which are trustworthy participants. The doctor of this institution is an actor, a faker. The field experiment wants to see if nurses will obey orders more or rules more. In this field experiment, the actor will tell the nurses to prescribe an amount double to the recommended amount of a certain drug that is actually just a regular sugar pill. The nurses were told to do so over the phone. The trick here is that, according to the rules, the nurses aren't allowed to obey the doctor's order if it's over the phone. Astonishingly, 21 of the 22 nurses gave the pills to the patients. Only one nurse obeyed the rules and decided not to give out the pill upon receiving orders through the phone. The rules were simple. 1. They were not allowed under any circumstances to receive and carry out orders through the phone. 2. The normal dosage was 10 mg, not the ordered 20 mg. Lastly, medicine given to patients must be on the stock list, whereas the fake pills, astrotin, weren't on the list. As you can tell from this experiment, these participants, or nurses to be exact, had no idea that they are being tested, and it is not held in a laboratory, but a more natural setting with controlled variables. In social sciences, such as psychology, field experiments can give us a more realistic data. However, like natural experiments, field experiments suffer from the possibility of contamination of unknown variables. Now that we've looked at the two field experiments, we can understand the basis, advantages, and flaws that field experiments have. In our vast world of possibilities and endless variables to consider, field experiments are disguised as everyday scenarios helping us understand human psychology in realistic situations, reflecting real-life scenarios and helping us get one step closer to psychic telepathy.